Today we've had a request to draw a tardigrade, so we're going to be starting off with the head. And this is just going to be an oval shape to the right hand side of the drawing. So just very lightly in pencil, just draw an oval shape just like I'm doing here. Now these are absolutely fascinating creatures. They're also known as moss piglets or water bears, so you may have heard those names as well. Okay, so now we're going to be drawing the little mouth area, which is just a circle here, starting off easily, just like this. Now we're going to be doing a long kind of barrel shape. So just follow what I'm doing here. Don't forget to pause and rewind if I go too quickly. Just like that. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's far from it. So just keep on going as many times as you need to. We're going to erase all these lines anyway. Now we're going to cut this into six segments. So just follow what I'm doing here. Just segment number one is going to be here. Another segment here. Another segment here. One more here and another one over here. Now they've got eight legs so we're just going to put in just the four on this side and I'm just going to draw them as sticks. So one stick leg here, another stick leg here and one more stick leg here and one more here. So I'm going to swap to pen. Please do carry on in pencil. It's just so that you can see it better on camera. We're going to start off with the head area. So this is going to be the mouth. So just go around the circle that we did before. So tardigrades are not closely related to anything on earth and they can live in a whole range of places ranging from mountain tops to the rainforest to Antarctica. So I'm just drawing this pattern. It looks almost like a floral pattern around the mouth. Just like so. I'm going to be drawing two lines here. Just like that. And then now for some of the folds in the head area. So behind this whole area, there's the brain. And in some tardigrades, you'll find just two photoreceptive cells. And those two cells, each of them are the eyes. There we go. So it just shapes like that. I'm going to be drawing a shape underneath like that. And one here as well. And then going to draw the bottom area of the head, just there. So the tardigrades are covered in these skins or shells, and it's called a cuticle. And some tardigrades actually lay their eggs inside the cuticle before they shed their skin. Um, so they have to shed their skin every time that they grow, um, a little bit like a snake. And some of them lay their eggs in the cuticle so that they're protected and they just leave them there when they shed their skin. So we're going to be doing the first leg. So either side of this stick line that I did before, we're gonna be drawing this little chubby leg. So, gonna be drawing the top parts around there. It's got like a little fold there. And then we're going to be drawing the claws like these little claws here. This is why they look so similar to bears. Their chubby bodies and big claws. There we go, so that's the first one. I'm just going to join up that line there. And now for the other one on the other side. It's 
going to kind of be a side version of this one. We're now going to draw the folds here. I'm going to be drawing one more segment, so round here, following the line that we did before, and under the belly. Now we're going to be drawing this other leg, so just up here, another chubby leg. So tardigrades can survive extreme conditions, and one of them is extreme temperatures, ranging from minus 273 degrees Celsius to extreme hot of 150 degrees Celsius. It's quite extraordinary, really. So the little claws. There we go. And then I'm just going to do the belly under here. I'm calling it the belly. I think they call these segments plates. So here we go. And then another segment here, another plate. And talking about extreme conditions, NASA actually sent tardigrades into space to see if they'd survive and they did survive in a vacuum. So now we're going to be drawing this other leg just here, just where we drew the stick. So like we did before, let's draw chubby leg around this side. Like this, and then the four little prongs of the claws. Actually can be a little bit webbed like that. There we go. Now I'm going to carry on the belly just underneath here. And then the top of this plate. And then another one here. And then for the last one, which contains the last leg. So I'm going to draw it like this. And coming round down below. And then the little claws coming up from here. So we're going to be drawing the other little claws on the other side. So the reason that they can survive these extreme conditions is because of something called cryptobiosis. And that means that it can lower its metabolism to less than 0.01% of what they normally do. And also it can go without food or water for around 30 years. Okay, so we've got the other little leg on the other side, which we're just putting in now. There we go. Brilliant. So if you haven't gone over it in pen, go over it in pen now and then erase all the pencil lines. Okay, so I've erased all the pencil lines. We're just going to add a tiny bit of shadow. So using my favorite cross hatching technique, which is where you draw lines in one direction and then you draw them in the other direction. That's what we're going to be using now. So there we go. I'm just going to start there to show you what I mean. There we go. Just to provide a little bit of, you know, a, a 3D effect. So just here on the underbelly, we're going to be drawing some shading. So I actually really enjoy um, drawing these kinds of drawings. When my when I was much younger, I used to illustrate my dad's parasitology textbooks, and I used to do some um, just kind of scientific drawings. It means they've got to be super accurate. So um, yeah, it's, it's a different type of technique to use. Okay, so now here. and shading underneath here. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, my dad um, was a scientist. He was quite a well-known parasitologist. And yeah, his, um, his speciality was in something called nematodes, so basically worms. There we go. So just adding a little bit of shadow underneath this area. 
little bit of shadow under here. This just makes it come to life. just under here it's very dark and on the side if you can see I'm, I'm kind of curving these lines now and I'm going to be doing the same down here slightly ever so slightly curved lines there we go And just a little bit more shading here. And then some curved lines on this one. Just like that. And then a little bit down here. So tardigrades feed on plant cells, algae, and other microorganisms. And some tardigrades actually feed on other tardigrades. Yeah, they can be a little bit carnivorous. It's only some of them though. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on this shading on this one, just a little bit higher, just till you get to about there. And the same on this one. And a little bit underneath here. When I do shading like this, I sometimes just relax my eyes just to kind of um, give it a kind of a soft focus feel so I can see what I'm doing, which areas are in dark, which areas are in light. Doing the final bit here, just make it really dark underneath here. And there we have our finished tardigrade. I really hope you've enjoyed that. If you've enjoyed this one, you're gonna absolutely love this one. So click on it now.